Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Before I bring on my guest from Diamond Head, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel or Brian Tatler is going to kick your ass. Isn't that right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for inviting me on your show. It's a pleasure to have you on my show. i um, been a big fan for years. Uh, a lot of my viewers uh, are probably going to be super stoked to uh, to see this interview, uh, especially if they're Saxon fans. Tell us what's going on with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the latest bit of news. And that uh, I got asked to join Saxon as their touring guitarist. Uh, now that Paul Quinn mm -hmm. has stepped down from live, from touring, because I think, you know, partly it, you know, it's his age, partly. I mean, he's got to have been doing it for so long now, 45, 47 years or something. Uh, and, um, you know, all respect due. I mean, he's, he's a fantastic player. So I was happy to um, to accept the uh, the offer and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm at home, busy learning the set. And and um, the great thing is um, with uh, Young Buck like yourself uh, joining the band, there's another 20 years to tour, right? Let's hope so. Let's hope so. <laughs> Speaking of touring, before we get on to, well, the reissue of uh, the White uh, album, Lightning to the Nations, um, that was released and remastered in 2021? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, so um, we'll put a link to uh, to that because there's a few other songs on there. Well, that was the covers album in 2022. So speaking of touring, um, we talked earlier before we uh, we went live. Uh, you got three big shows coming up with Diamond Head. One of them I would love to see. You're with Volbeat, and that's, that's right. going to be in Austria of all places. Um, I I'm looking forward to that show. I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to have to see it on YouTube, but. Um, you must be stoked to see that to be in, in that show and involved in it. Absolutely. Uh, it's the first time we've played with Bold Beat. Um, we got a, an offer. I think they were looking for, you know, more old school bands. So uh, we were more than happy to, to to do it. I think it's a it's like an outdoor gig in a big sort of arena. And it I think it's nine and a half thousand and it's sold out. So, uh, we're yeah, we're excited to do that. That's coming up uh, towards the end of June. Great. Um, just to let the viewers know, um, there is a bit of a delay um, with um, with the video. So that's uh, I don't know if that could be because you're in you're in England, correct? You're in I am. I'm in Stourbridge in the Midlands, right in the middle. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I don't know where that is. <laughs> um, and then you've got two other shows. Uh, you've got um, Time to Rock, and that's going to be in Finland, correct, in July. Yes, I think so. Yeah, that's right. And then another one, I think you said, with um, you guys are playing in Sweden. Um, I, yeah, I think Sweden's July, and I think Finland is August. But okay. um, yeah, it'll be, it'll it's on the website. Uh, it's on Facebook. If, okay. if if anybody's in that area, if anybody's thinking of going, just looking forward to that. Well, I'm sure they would be if they're in the area, and. Um... Yeah, I wish I was living in Europe. I could see those shows. But <laughs> in any event, you have a full plate, uh, my friend. You've got uh, another eight shows with Saxon coming up or something like that, correct? I think it's nine. It's nine, nine European festivals so far. Um, and then um, it, next year, we, we've, we're doing a tour with Judas Priest around the UK, all playing mm. really big venues. Uh, and it's Judas Priest, Saxon, and Uriah Heap. Um, and I'm amazed to to be. I've never um, been on a tour with Judas Priest before. The, the closest Diamond Head's come in the past is we've been on the same festival bill. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm a big Priest fan and have been since maybe 1975. So to be on tour with them, where we can you know watch them every night and and get to know them a little bit and chat, will be uh, fantastic. I'm. I'm stoked about that. That's that's only come in like a couple of weeks ago, and I'm I'm excited for that already. It's not till March 2024, but I'm already looking forward to that. Time flies, though. Time flies. Uh -huh. for sure. <laughs> um, before we get to um the question, well, it's not even a question. Before we get to, how do you say? It? I'm going to use a rock as my little segue, but 
Uh, you guys started out in 76, I believe. Uh huh. What keeps you going after all these years? I think I've asked myself that. I mean, obviously, other people have asked me that. And I think it's just finding your thing. Uh, I once I realized, I, you know, I, I like obviously I love rock music, always I've done. But once I formed the band and I, I could play the guitar, I think. I realised that's me, that is what I'm best at doing, that is what I'm most comfortable at doing, that is what I prefer to do rather than anything else. I've never found anything that I like more, really, than being in a band, uh, making music, uh, you know, doing doing live gigs. and That cam camarad camaraderie? <laughs> camaraderie? It. No, uh, uh, that, you know the word. But yeah. uh, I, I enjoy that and um i like making records uh, i like the whole thing it's uh it's never really left me so um i still i still enjoy doing it so i think why why stop you know yeah I, right. I always think the only thing that will stop me would be a health problem you know if i could right. no longer play physically mm -hmm. or something happened then i'd have to admit okay i can't play the guitar anymore but until that day comes I'm going to make the most of it. Right on. Um, I asked, uh, speaking of Judas Priest, um, you'll be touring with Richie Faulkner, uh -huh. obviously. Um, I had interviewed him years ago, and I asked him what his last day job was, and he said it was a barman. And I didn't know what a barman <laughs> was because I'm Canadian. Um, so it was a bartender. <laughs> what was your last day job? Did you have one, or did you just go straight uh -huh. from... Now I did have a day job. I, I, I worked in the studio for five years as a sort of uh, engineer. You know, bands would come in, local bands, and I, I've done guitar lessons. But when I left school, I was a car mechanic and I, a heavy goods vehicle mechanic. And I did that for four years. And I went to college and, and did City and Guilds and, and got, you know, qualified. But, of course, I, I didn't really like the job. Uh and I always dreamed, at the same time I was doing Diamond Head and I was practicing every day, and I always dreamed that one day I shall leave the job and, you know, get a record deal and and tour the world and things like that. So I kind of had my head uh, firmly in the in the clouds, if you like, but also dreaming about when I, I could leave the job and uh, d do something that I actually enjoyed. It, it was sort of a means to an end in that, it, it got me the money to, I could buy a car, I could buy equipment, buy a guitar. I bought a Fender Stratocaster. I bought the, my white flying V. Uh, with the money I made from be, being a car mechanic or vehicle mechanic. Right, right. Um, so for my viewers here, in, unless you're living under a rock in bedrock, <laughs> you would know <laughs> the connection between Metallica and Diamond Head and the Garage um, EP. Uh, Am I Evil, um, Helpless, It's Electric, and The Prince, um, they covered your songs. When you guys found That's out right. that they did those songs, it must have blew you right out of uh, the UK. Uh, it did, but, but don't forget, it started small. And when they first covered Diamond Head in 1984, when there was still an upcoming band. I mean, at that point, Diamond Head was probably bigger than Metallica. Uh, but we knew Lars, of course, and Lars's band, as we used to call them, um, had covered Am I Evil on the, on the B-side of their Creeping Death 12-inch Creeping Death. single. Uh, and so we were extremely flattered that a band had covered Diamond Head. They're the first band ever to cover Diamond Head. And... Uh, we listened carefully to it and thought they'd done a great job. Worked at the solo and it was it was spot on. Uh, and so, little did we know that this band was to become the biggest heavy metal band of all time, and that it would make us a lot of money in, in the publishing royalties. And you know what? You I had not I got a clue. You really, I believe in synchronicity. <laughs> I was going to ask that question if about royalties. I was going to yeah, ask yeah. you before we went live, because I, I don't like to just put somebody on the spot. I don't think it's fair. So you brought it up. 
So royalty wise, um, is it fair <laughs> to say that you guys are still doing pretty good? Yeah, we've been making money from it for over 30 years. So and of course we get uh, six monthly uh, amounts and statements. Um, so it, it has been such a, a blessing to to get those royalties. I, I, I mean, it, it hit the peak when, when they released Garage Inc, the album in 1998. Mm -hmm. Because there's now four Diamond Dead songs on that album. Yeah. So I mean, we had been making money from uh, various releases because they put the prints on the B side of, of one, the, the the single one, and uh, uh, they put help that help us on that EP, the Garage Days re revisited EP. Uh, so we kept seeing money coming in, but once <laughs> once they released it on a proper album, they did like five million copies or something. Then, yeah. You saw your, you know, let's buy a house type. Well, I have a song that I'm getting royalties on. Um, it's called I Can't Sing. I've got, <laughs> uh, they gave, I got a check for uh, three cents last year. So, I mean, I think I'm on the way up. <laughs> and actually, a long way to the top. That's right. If you want to <laughs> rock and roll, right? Absolutely. Um, speaking of that, I just want to bring up to my viewers thanks everybody for uh, subscribing lately. Um, I, I literally, it's just blossomed. I just um, I'm heading for that one thousand mark. So please subscribe because uh, Brian is going to kick your ass. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, so touring worldwide. Um, you've you've spoken. You're in uh, Canada in about 2017. You've done the heavy rock uh, a few times. Um, yeah. where would the most interesting place to say that you've um it's one of the biggest memories of the thousands of shows you've done whether it's a small venue big venue uh small country big country is there one that stands out um i always used to say reading festival when we played that in 1982 was was a, a moment because it did, did feel like we were getting we we're getting there you know we'd find we'd been working for six years we'd been climbing the ladder playing little clubs and and then when we hit Reading Festival in 1982, it felt like the culmination of years of work and, and uh, it felt like a payoff. Um, we definitely had a, a sort of a feeling that, you know, we can do this, you know. Uh, uh, we also supported ACDC in a, at a couple of gigs in 1980. And uh, again, that felt uh, like justification, mainly because both gigs were sold out. They'd been sold out long before Diamond they were even added on as support band. Mm. Uh, so everybody there, 3,000 people were there to see ACDC. And yet we went on, you know, we were all 19, 20 years old, and we went down really, really well. And we thought to ourselves, wow, you know, if we can win over an ACDC audience, yeah. we must have something. We must be good. The, you know, they could have hated us. They could have th bottled us up. And, and we seemed to win win through and uh, again the confidence you feel from uh, turning an audience round to you which is not easy to do is uh gave us a real you know kick up the kick in the pants uh, so both of the you know those experiences were were form you know formulative uh, fantastic experiences you brought up something I find interesting that you, you read about in social media or the news every once in a while, how bands will go and open up for another band. And you literally have some of these morons throwing things at you because they want the, 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 um, they want the headliner on. Like, what do you, what do you make of that? <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. I, I wouldn't do it, but I suppose there's always going to be a few bored people, you know, people have thrown coins at bands before now, haven't they? Uh, and um, I remember we did a gig and there was some punk rockers in the audience. Oh, because the support band was a punk band called Dangerous Girls, I think. And so they were spitting at us when we oh. were on. We were headlining. The support band had already been on and gone, but the punks were still there. There weren't many of them. And they, were, they thought it was okay to spit at them. We didn't like it. So we sent, we dispatched some roadies into the audience to so sort out the spitters, you know. Uh, and they did. But uh, now, uh, I, I don't know why. I mean, I, I, if I went to see a band and I didn't like the support band, I would probably go to the bar, get a drink, have a chat, 
backstage, uh, mm-hmm. well, not backstage, you know, just just chat and, and wait for the headliners, you know. But I, I will often check out support bands because occasionally mm-hmm. uh, there's a gem to be found. I, I yeah. can remember uh, I saw Muse open for oh, Three wow. Cups Red and I saw Stereophonics mm-hmm. uh, open for Three Colors Red, actually. So um, sometimes the support band's great. A lot of times it's not for me or I'll think, nah, you know, but occasionally, you know, it's worth having, it's worth having a quick listen. And if you yeah. don't like it, but I wouldn't throw. No. I would, it's rude. I wouldn't like it. Yeah. Why would anyone like it? Yeah. It's, um, well, spitting these days, that's attempted murder. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, before I let you go, my friend, um, because I know you've got a few other uh, interviews to do, um, I want to thank Michelle for setting this up. She was as honest as the day is long. She said you'd be a great chat, and I've thank had you. a great time. Um, Canadian influences, do you have any? Rush. Yeah, I love Rush, obviously. Um, it's a shame they're not going anymore, but I understand, you know, with Neil going, fair enough, draw a line. Uh, you can't replace Neil Peart. But mm. I saw, I've seen Rush maybe five times over the years in the early days i saw them on the farewell to kings tour and then hemispheres and then uh, moving pictures i think moving Mm. pictures is my favorite album uh my favorite rush album i think it's probably in the top 10 albums of all time um and we used to try and you know nick bits of rush like xanadu was a big song for diamond head Mm-hmm. Uh, just because we love the dynamics and the and all the different parts, and and we would try and write a song a bit like Zana do. We didn't manage it, but we'd have a go. And then we really all really loved uh, movie pictures, um, Tom Sawyer, you know, Red Barchetta, etc. Uh, and things like Trees off Hemispheres and that, just mm-hmm. you know, La Villa Strangiato, fantastic. Our other guitarist actually in Diamond Dead Abs. He's obsessed with Russia, and I think he's seen him 26 times. <laughs> so he, he goes every time, you know, right up to Clockwork Angels and stuff. So uh, he, he was a diehard fan. Well, let him know that um, Alex hasn't stopped yet. Uh, there's nothing with the Rush, but um, they formed a band called Envy of None. Okay. About a year ago with um, um, Andy Curran of Coney Hatch. Okay. Um, so they did one album, but, um, that was that and speak for some reason. I just remembered happy belated birthday. You you just recently had a birthday. Me. I did actually. Yeah. 25th of April. So yeah, only a few weeks ago. Yeah. How do you feel with the big four? Oh, uh, okay. Doing okay. Well, you look Uh, great, my friend. You look great. Um, last question. (laughs) Thank you. What's the opposite of unsubscribe? <laughs> I don't understand the question. Okay, what is the opposite of oh. the word unsubscribe? Subscribe. subscribe. Do as Brian from Diamond Head, Diamond Head says <laughs> and subscribe to the channel so you get these great interviews. And I'll put all the links, uh, Brian, to your website and everything at the bottom of uh, the description box on the YouTube channel when I have this uploaded. And... Uh, Um, All the viewers would like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.